thing, well, I mean, it's a very interesting and important point. I suppose, I mean, this isn't a political rally. I think that's the distinction. This is, I mean, I spend a lot of my time waltzing across the country trying to do exactly that, trying to get people to feel fired up about the injustices they face, but also to want to feel like they're doing something about it. And I suppose this is more of a, an event where we can talk about our history. That's the theme, to talk about the history and what, what it can teach us and how it can inspire us. And I think that has its role to play in terms of what we do as a movement. Uh, but at the same time, of course, we need the sorts of events which I spend all too much of my time uh, at, uh, which are about trying to inspire people directly in terms of being, you know, a, as a political rally that, in, that gets people up and ready to change society. But what I would say is it isn't just about anger because there is actually no shortage of anger out there. And the problem often is people's anger is redirected, of course, at all the wrong people, the people at the bottom of society uh, who are forced to, 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 you know, to take the blame for the misdemeanors and crimes of the people with power. And uh, the, the problem we've got at the moment, in, in the absence of hope, people feel angry in either a destructive way, that anger directed at all the wrong people, or a kind of angry resignation, you know, to yell at the television and throw things at the radio, but not feel that there's anything they can do to change society. And of course, it was Tony Benn, who I miss very much, and he said that the way you get change is the burning flame of anger at injustice and the burning flame of hope at a better world. And we've got to marry the two. You know, it's not enough to be angry at all the injustices that afflict us, a country in which uh, we have the wealth of the richest 1,000 people doubling whilst a million of our fellow citizens, and this the sixth richest country on the face of the earth, are driven to food banks, unable to satisfy one of the most basic human needs there are other than uh, breathing and drinking, to eat. You know, we can talk about these, you know, we... You know, we can talk about a housing crisis as Peter talks about, where in this city, Russian oligarchs snap up new-build properties and leave them vacant, whilst uh, one in four young people grow up in an overcrowded home with all the damage that inflicts on their health and education and well-being. And we can talk about the effects of, to disabled people. And if, you know, we judge a civilised society by how we treat the sick and disabled in our midst, then, by goodness, how we are failing at the moment. We could go on all night, but the problem, I think that we haven't overcome at the moment is that issue of hope about a coherent alternative that resonates with people, told in a language they understand, that is coherent and credible, and, and that can bring people to think, yes, I'm fed up with how things are, but I'm not going to grit my teeth and take the blows because I don't think there's any other alternative, that there is no alternative, that injustice is like the weather, which you can complain about it raining, but there's nothing you can do about it. And that's how people feel at the moment. So all I'm asking for, and it is a bit off topic, I think, at this event, no, it's fine, in terms of the answer, is yes, let's have the anger, and I could be here all night talking about those injustices, but let's start talking a bit more about hope and the optimistic vision of a society that we could build in the tradition of the ancestors we spoke about tonight.